Hello and welcome back to another Urban Aviary video, everybody. You're joining me now on this beautiful Monday morning as I drive into work to the Park City area. And I wanted to shoot another video and kind of give you guys my thoughts on why uh, it is a good thing to raise quail, what some of the benefits are and why you might be interested in raising quail. I want everybody to understand that when I'm talking about quail ever, I am referring to the Caternix quail, which is a Japanese quail. They're also found in different parts of Europe, not as predominantly as they used to be. They're now a lot more common as a domestic bird, but that's the type of quail I'm talking about. If I'm talking about uh, some of our native species here in the U.S., like your Bob Whites or California's mountain quail, whatever, I'll specifically uh, tell you that's what I'm talking about. So when I'm just talking about quail and saying quail, I'm talking about this variety that I raise, which is the Caternix, which has been domesticated for the last 2,000 years or so as a meat and egg production bird. The reason they are a meat and egg production bird and lend themselves so well to that is because of their time to slaughter size, their maturity, and when they start laying eggs. People ask sometimes, why do you raise, why don't you raise Bob Whites or these other quail? Sometimes they can be larger. Uh, they can be, but they also don't have the speed of growth. They have a feed conversion that's incredible and a time to slaughter that is absolutely incredible, which is six to eight weeks for most of them, which is a very quick turnaround time from a chick to a, you know, a, a processed bird ready to go on the grill. And then they're also laying eggs at that time by six to eight weeks. And they do it uh, pretty consistently and productively, about an egg a day. And you'll get a couple of good years of laying out of them at that rate in an egg a day if you keep light on them constantly and continually. If you give them a break and give them an off season, they may go longer than that. So that's what the first and biggest main benefit and reason why you would look into Caternix quail is that hyper productivity and the time to slaughter because it's really beneficial if you have birds and something catastrophic happens and your birds die, you're only another six to eight weeks away from uh, raising more. Try and do that with chickens. Get them out to, you know, four, five months old and then they can die and then you're starting over at six months again. The next thing is that they are very good for backyard production and small scale production. They are a smaller bird and so they do lend themselves to places like urban backyards because you can have them in cages in smaller places or in your garage like I have done. And then they also lend themselves well to that because a lot of these HOAs in small towns have regulations on a lot of poultry. My town in particular has a restriction on yard size for chickens and they do not allow ducks. I found that out last year when I was forced to get rid of all my ducks and chickens. <laughs> Fortunately, they don't have any regulations on quail. And a lot of townships are the same way unless they have a flat out poultry ban, which some cities uh, may have. But if you do live in an area or an HOA where they don't allow chickens and they don't have any, and usually they don't have any specific wording saying anything about quail, then you should be able to get away with it just fine as long as it's out of sight and out of mind. So they lend themselves to that very well in that regard of being able to be kept where other people can't see them and still be able to produce your own meat and eggs. You can produce them even in your in your home, in a spare bedroom, in some aquariums with a incubator. You could actually produce your own meat and eggs inside your house cleanly without smelling uh, fairly easily and no one would, uh, would ever know. They also make really great pets and they're a very unique pet and they're really cool as they come in a variety of colors which makes them a lot a lot more fun to have as pets and have a variety of them they're like i said they've been domesticated for the last 2000 years they come to be very at home in a cage people get really worried about them being over crammed and stuff and as long as they you know aren't uh bumping into each other constantly and can't turn themselves around then they're actually not uh all that unhappy being around a lot of them they're very social creatures and like to be together they can be raised in in cages in an aviary outside there's just uh, numerous ways you can you can keep them but in the house is a really good way if you want to keep them as pets 
it's a lot of fun. You can just keep them in an aquarium, which makes it a lot uh, easier to clean out if you're using wood shavings or something like that. Instead of having a cage inside and having poop trays you have to clean out. Uh, so they do make really good pets, and they're very domesticated. They seem to not like to be picked up very much when you actually you know, pick them up over their wings. They struggle because it feels like they're being attacked by a predator. But once you set them down, they're mostly tame and calm. Uh, they'll let you pet them and stroke their back and their bellies. And if you handle them as chicks frequently, uh, that will be a lot easier for them to to uh, to trust you and want to be held and, and to be okay with that. So they do make really great pets. And then another really cool and often overlooked reason why you might want to raise quail is they are such a great teaching tool for children to teach them a, a few valuable life lessons. One of them being just the cycle of life of how a bird goes from an egg to an adult bird and since that happens so fast with Caternix quail you know from a chick to a an adult laying eggs again in six to eight weeks it's easier for children to and younger kids to pay attention to that and not lose interest in it it's a lot harder to do that with birds like chickens and ducks because they take so much longer to get to full size. But within six to eight weeks, you know, just a couple months, you can watch every day the exponential growth every day that these birds have. It's a lot more obvious to kids and it can hold their attention a lot better. So it's great for, for teaching them that and seeing that life cycle all the way for, and, the, and the birthing process, the hatching process. They can see, uh, see the birds hatch. It's always fun to, to watch the birds hatch on hatch day. And then also, it's, it's great to teach them a, another lesson, which is that we are all born with this terminal illness called life. And the fact that that, uh, that terminal illness will soon, soon snuff us out. Well, not soon, but it will eventually snuff us out. And we will all go the, the way of the world. And that's just a normal part of life. And being introduced to that at a young age, I think is very important. And it's good to see it with birds like this, uh, especially if you're raising them for production and you don't get uh, super attached to them. It's a lot easier to see that happen and have them prepared for that for, you know, when the family dog or cat dies, which will be uh, a lot more traumatic and sad for them. My two-year-old right now understands when we go in and uh, feed the birds sometimes, and I pull a couple out that have died, a couple of the chicks, and he'll say, oh, that's so sad, they died. And he doesn't have his you know, head fully wrapped around it yet, but he's getting the idea and starting to understand the, the concept, and he's being... Um, He's being made aware of it a lot sooner at a younger age, and I think that'll help him for, you know, one day when our, our lab dies, she, she will die at some point. And I think being around that, that situation and having that happen will, will prepare kids for, for those type of, type of circumstances. So I think quail are also very, very valuable in teaching kids um, some valuable lessons and help them to be, uh, be stronger and better when, you know, tough times come and, and bad and sad things happen. So if you're thinking about getting into quail, this is uh, my encouragement to you is to get started. It's not expensive or difficult to get started. They're not difficult to raise. They can bring a lot of fulfillment and enjoyment to your life. And, uh, you know, whether that's for raising them as pets to have a fun and unique pet, you know, all the colors and varieties they come in, or as a meat and egg production bird for your urban homestead, small scale production, or if you want to try and, you know, sell a few quail related products to help your hobby pay for itself, or make a small side hustle business out of it, or even a full-time business out of it. Uh, they can do a lot of things for you. I'll maybe do another video in the near future. Maybe the next one will be on some of the different avenues on how you can make money raising quail. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. And I'm also here for you guys all the time with any questions you have and to help you out on getting started doing this. Uh, you can email me at jaron at urbanaviary.com anytime and I'll be happy to help you out. And that's it for this video. And until the next one, remember, you guys can do this too.